Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today's module is entitled, What is Lean and Six Sigma and Why Are They Important? Module. The purpose of this module is to teach students about Lean Six Sigma. First of all, we'll start with Lean. What is Lean? Lean, lean identifies seven forms of waste. These forms of waste are overprocessing. Overprocessing is when you do something to the product that the customer is not willing to pay for. For example, let's say the customer wants a red uh, ball here, this uh, pool ball, that's what they're asking for, and you decide, hey, it'd be cool if I put a white dot in there with a seven in it. Well, the customer didn't ask for that, they're not willing to pay for it, and you do it anyway. That's waste. Transportation is, let's say I want to move this ball from my recording studio where I'm currently at, up to my office upstairs. And instead, I put it in my pocket, and I drive to the post office, I drive to the grocery store, I come back, and I take it up there and set it down in my office, where it needed to be anyway. There was a lot of transportation. Transportation is movement of the product or service. Okay? And that's considered waste. Too much movement. They want to eliminate all transportation if possible. Motion. Motion is the motion of people. Maybe I'm painting this seven on here, and I have quite a few cue balls here, or pool balls here, and so I have to go over here and get the paint and reach up on a shelf and bring it down. Okay, that's a lot of motion. I'm walking, I'm moving my arms up, getting it. Motion is human movement there. Inventory, and when we create too much, we put it in inventory, and it just sits there till the customer orders again, assuming they do. It's kind of a liability. So inventory is considered a waste in lean. Waiting time, okay. Let's say I created this uh, red ball here, and I want my son to paint a number seven on it. And I get through with the red and white, and then I set it down. It just sits there and waits for three hours till my son finally comes along and draws the seven on there. That is waiting time. Waiting time is waste in the world of lean. Overproduction is when we build more of these than the customer ordered, which usually results in either inventory or you just throw them away. Anyway, overproduction in the world of lean is considered waste. Some organizations add number eight form of waste here, and that's underutilizing employee talents. And so that's not a good thing, and it is most certainly a big time waste. All right, uh, what is lean then? Lean is a methodology that continuously removes waste from a process. So you never stop removing waste from processes. Now that process could be a manufacturing process, could be an accounting process, could be the process of me creating this video. Any process can benefit from lean. When a critical portion of waste is removed from a process, it will naturally experience process flow. Wow, that's a pretty important thing. In other words, if you keep removing waste, eventually that ball that I'm creating will never stop. It just moves, continuously moves through the process. So let me read that again. When a critical proportion of waste is removed from a process, it will naturally experience process flow, which results in exponential improvements in process performance. Okay, And how much improvement in performance? Well, I was touring a facility the other day, a manufacturing facility it happened to be, and uh, they said when they first started their lean journey, uh, from the time it took uh, to get the customer order to delivering the part to the customer took 33 days on average. Well, they did lean. They leaned everything else. They created flow, which, by the way, may seem easy. It takes companies decades to create flow. So if you think this is an overnight success, think again. I'm not saying it couldn't be, but there's a lot of resistance to making this happen. But you get enough down, it gets flow. And this company created flow and in their processes. And it went from that 33 days, again, 33 days from the time the customer ordered to the time they got their part, to less than an hour. And that you'll just think, boom, that's unbelievable. I can't even believe that. Well, a lot of people can't believe how powerful lean really is. And that's what lean does. When you reduce waste to the point you get flow, you get these exponential improvements in process in process performance. It's unbelievable how powerful it is. Okay, what is Six Sigma? Six Sigma is a methodology that is used to improve probability of success. There it is. That's in a nutshell what Six Sigma is all about, improving probabilities. 
Six Sigma equals a probability of success of 99.9964%. Wouldn't you like that probability of success? Say you're a baseball player, your kid's a baseball player, and you teach them to swing and hit the ball and uh, eventually get them up to where 99.99964% of the time they hit a home run. Would that be amazing or what? Well, that's what Six Sigma is all about, is creating that. And so it's pretty amazing. Why is Lean Six Sigma so important? Well, let me explain. Say we, let's say I have this uh, project here. It's a very simple project. I want to fill this bucket full of water. So I plumb some piping in there, and I have a few valves laying around, so why not? Let's throw them in there. And uh, there you have it. And so uh, that's where I'm at. I'm all ready to go here. I'm ready to fulfill the objective. In probability statistics, there are two general types of statements that you need to know about if you're going to do Six Sigma, and that is an and or an or statement. Let me ask you. Remember, my objective is to fill this bucket full of water. I have these three valves. Which one is this, an and or or statement? Valve one must work, or valve two, or valve three. Is that a correct statement, or is this an and statement? Valve one must work, and valve two, and valve three. Is it an and or or statement? Look at that and decide. Well, if you decided it's an and statement, you're correct. And in and statements, notice I put a probability of success on this valve, 95%. It's not a Six Sigma probability. No, it's not a Six Sigma. It's 0.95. But if these are and statements, the way you deal with and statements, if you want to calculate the probability of valve 1 working and valve 2 working and valve 3 working, in other words, the probability of reaching my objective, then you multiply all the probabilities together in this case. So it's 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95, which is approximately 86% success rate. Now let's say I add more valves into the situation here. What happens when I add more valves? Notice the reliability or probability stays the same. Multiply all up, goes, drops down to 73.5% for six and statements. When I had three and statements, it was 86%. So what's happening is I add more, what I'm going to call now, not valves, but I add more and statements. This must work, and this must work, and this must work. There's six of them, and statements. Um, then I have to multiply them all together. I get 73.5%. But what happens is I add more and statements. My probability, my overall probability of success goes down rather dramatically, doesn't it? Yep. And that's what Six Sigma is all about. Six Sigma, as you'll find, is about probabilities. It's improving this probability. Lean is about, hey, if you don't need all these valves, let's get rid of the ones that you don't want. By the way, number of and statements, as it, they increase and increase and increase, you get more and more and statements. That's called complexity. Massive and statements is called complexity. And in our society, what's happening, may I ask, are we becoming more complex, more and statements in our life, or less? If you said, oh, and statements are increasing, you're correct. And statements are going up exponentially. And by the way, here's a symbol here. This symbolizes 10,000 and statements. You may think, wow, that's a lot of and statements. Wow, the customer has a lot of requirements. Well, do you think in an automobile uh, there's a lot of and statements? They're called specification limits. So you must meet this specification limit, and this specification limit, and this specification limit. Well, Boeing recently created an airplane. I read about it, and they said they had 10 million and statements. 10 million. That's called complexity. Oh, by the way, that was just in the software. So we're living in a world of increasing complexity, and we need a group of people that know how to handle it. And the people that can handle this and know how to manage it, they're called Lean Six Sigma Practitioners. This is the fundamental equation for Lean Six Sigma. The probability of success, which is the probability of me filling the bucket, for example, which in this case was 85.77%. How do we calculate that? We take the probability of and statements, of an individual and statement there, and we put that in there. And the number of and statements, which would be 1, 2, 3. Put 3 in there. And if we ran it through this equation, it ended up being 85.7%. Now, this is how Six Sigma and Lean works. Six Sigma focuses efforts on probability of and. So 
Six Sigma focuses on how do we improve this probability with a goal of Six Sigma, which is 99.99964%, a very good percentage, a very good probability. And Lean says, hey, of all this complexity, how much of it is really necessary? They say 70% of processes is waste means 30% value added. You read different studies, uh, but that's what I remember around 70. I was kind of shocked until I actually started looking at everything and think, wow, there's a lot of waste around here. And it really hurts us, especially in a world of complexity. So lean gets rid of unnecessary complexity. Six Sigma focuses on this base number of improving probabilities by changing the design of the system. And this is highly analytical, by the way. You have to go in and look at all the elements of the design, for example, in this valve. And you have to figure out what elements are impacting the probability of failure. In other words, create increased variability. In Six Sigma, we improve our probability of success by reducing variability, by the way. So anyway, this is the fundamental equation. So let's play around with it a little bit. Let's say we have 10,000 end statements at 95%. Uh, each of those AND statements. And we want to know the probability of overall success. So I put my 0.95 in there. I put my 10,000 AND statements up here. I plug it in my calculator and I get zero. Okay, it's not actually zero. There are actually a decimal point, 222 zeros in the number 172. Not a very good number for probability of success. Would you like to drive around? Or would you like to use a computer that has that probability of success? No. I think I've had one once in a while. I'm sure you agree you have too. It's terrible. Okay, and by the way, this is two, basically two sigma probabilities. Two sigma probability is actually 95.44, but close enough. Now, if I go three sigma, that gives me a probability of 99.73%. Okay, so let's plug that in. 0.9973 to the 10,000th power. Guess what? It's still basically zero. Actually, after the decimal point, there are 11 zeros and then the number 181. But still, obviously not acceptable. Now, I must say also, if all you're doing is blaming all your problems on people, it's a people problem. The reason this process isn't working is because of the people, stupid people, then the, if that's your attitude, the best you'll ever get is 95%. Okay? On average, that's about as good as you're going to get. Is that good enough for the world of complexity? No. So ASQ, or not ASQ, but uh, Six Sigma Black Belt, they learn to fix the system to improve probabilities. Now let's go to the Six Sigma probability, see what happens. There's our Six Sigma probability to the 10,000th power. Hey, that's not bad. We can live with that. In a world of complexity, around 97% success rate, not too shabby. And of course, we could be better in Six Sigma and keep increasing this to drive that number up. And of course, constantly, getting rid of unnecessary complexity. This number is always going to grow, but we can get rid of unnecessary complexity and really help out the overall probability. All right, now I just wanted to show you what would happen. Here I have 0.59s. But what if I drop that down to 0.49s? Look what happens with 10,000 end statements. 0.4964, 10,000 power. Whoa! It drops clear down to 0 0.698. So it goes from 0.965 to 0.698. This is why Six Sigma and Lean are so important, especially in a world of complexity. So what's in it for you? Well, Six Sigma black belts get paid pretty well. Payscale.com had them at 96,000. Glassdoor had them at 97,919. Salary.com had them at 109,900. ASQ, who does a pretty extensive survey, had it at 97,600. If we take the average of all these, we end up with a grand average of an annual salary for a Six Sigma black belt of $100,354.75. Not too shabby. But maybe you're a manager and think, uh, I, I'd like, I didn't find the statistics, but I'll bet if you're a manager and you know Lean Six Sigma, I bet, I'll bet those people get paid a lot more. So this is good, a good class for everyone in an organization who wants to help prepare uh, so that they can be problem solvers for future problems that are involved in complexity. All right, so now you know the basics of what Lean and Six Sigma are all about. I hope you want to join up and take the class. I have a website just for 
Six Sigma Black Belt class. My Six Sigma Black Belt class covers project management, organizational transformation, lean, and Six Sigma. So it's the whole bit there. But it's at www.asqcssbb for certified Six Sigma Black Belt .com to learn more about our online class. And if you'd like to purchase the class, you can go to that website, click register now. It will uh, send you to a place where you can pay for the class. And uh, then you just wait and give me a little bit and I'll get back with your login information. And you can get started right away. Now you can also, if you want to see all the training that my company offers, go to visit, go visit my website at www.alphatc.com. It has all my classes and you can learn about those. And if you want to purchase it from that website, just go to this tab right up here, which is currently called training, but I'm going to change that to purchase a class here pretty quick. Uh, anyway, select that option and you can go in there and purchase a class. Well, congratulations, you have completed this module. If you have any questions, please let me know. And hopefully you'll sign up and we can join in this certification journey together. It'd be a great honor to me to be your teacher. I hope you'll consider me. Thank you. And have a great day. Goodbye.